I mean, part of this, just for your reference as well, the way it works is that we like to record a lot of things because of the high turnover. And therefore, if you can just point a person to a conversation that's happened before, they can study it as opposed to me spending, you know, like, you know, half an hour trying to explain what we talked about. They can just say, okay, here's a, here's our meeting. Take a, take a look at that and then take a look at our notes. So, so that's, that's how we do it a lot of times. It's one of the ways to manage the high turnover like just just even like right now man we've got we had a couple of uh like right now our team is down a couple more people i mean a couple of people just just left again it's 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 a really challenging thing so the the one thing i'm noticing is that like i mentioned we want to have pretty high quality people who are really committed and that's that's worth it because i'd rather have a smaller team with better committed people than people that you have to follow up with who don't just don't um, you know where the performance management cost is a significant cost anyway that's kind of an aside on um why we want to document and try to keep the continuity as best as we can but i really like the idea of the application tracking system because i know it's a mess like you tr say you're trying to find an email you know get all these emails in your inbox and you go to another side then you go to the wiki and all all that I think streamlining that to a single place that would be a great idea yeah so yeah so go why don't you go ahead with uh, so uh-huh yeah so jo job set Zoho orange HRM mm-hmm and there's uh, again there's I only put three there the, the research that I did there's there's more out there mm -hmm. um, so I just grabbed three of them and when I when if, if we're in alignment and agreement that we're going to walk down this path. I'll start um, getting more tactical and finding out what's going to be the best bang for no, no, no bucks. Okay. Um, and, and that being, what's the most user friendly? So let's say that me, like I, I fell off the face of the earth and somebody has to sign in and handle yeah. this system. It's got to be very user friendly. It yeah. can't be HR centric. Um, but most of these open source ATS systems are built for um, startup companies. Um, mm -hmm. people that only need to post like one job or two jobs. So, anywho, so yeah. we'll, uh, let me put that to the side for a yeah. second. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, with moving on from that, let me just jump into untapped resources. So, you know, some of my further research, research I discovered a, a whole open source in my industry in HR, and it really huh. is. It's called HR Open Source. And huh. this is a, a forum and a community of HR professionals globally where they can go and contribute, they can do case studies, they can, there's blogging, there's oh, all wow. sorts of stuff. So this is another, um, just an untapped resource for us. Um, huh. And also, I, w I started thinking about it, where, where do I go to find people that want to make a difference, that want to be contributors, you know, so on and so forth? How, how do you recruit for open, open source? And there's so many articles and blogs and information out there with the traditional sense of open source being looking for coders and, you know, more in the tech industry. But it's really it's the same model. It, it's the same recruiting tactics. If you're looking for, we'll just call it, you know, if you're looking for volunteers, I mean, it, 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 it all, it, it's all relevant. So regardless if you're looking for coders or, you know, people to, to volunteer for X, Y, Z. So what led me to that was huh. starting to look at communities out there with skill sets that would be valuable, would be a, a contribution, um, and that would be, there, there's just, you know, I, I engineering, civil engineering, engineering stuck out in my mind. So I started diving into that, and I just found a whole world of volunteer um, sites for people that are civil engineers or engineer skill sets that want to, you know, volunteer. resources to find out, hey, how can I highlight, you know, a, a, an organization that I'm involved with to see if anybody wants to assist. Mm -hmm. So, hence the, like, Engineers Without Borders, you know, it's, it's, um, they have this yeah. whole section called Volunteer Village. Are you familiar with it? You can stop me if I'm... I'm uh, familiar with Engineering Engineers Without Borders. The, I've had a little bit of contact with them. The thing is that they typically like to work on pro very specific projects on their end. I'm not sure if they actually go out and volunteer for... Yeah, I haven't run into where they actually volunteer for other organizations to, dedic to do dedicated development work. Right. But I'm... 
I don't know enough about them. We can definitely take a look. I had some contact with student chapters where they were basically doing okay. They've got a project somewhere, and they're doing that. So it was we weren't able to recruit people specifically for our team. Like we did try to reach out a little bit, but it can be worth trying again. I mean, definitely they're a good, good base of people. And yeah. but the only other thing, just one more thing though, um, on a students, while we have maybe. Let's see, on our group, maybe we got like 30% who are students right now. But once again, with the students, that, that thing is there, the, the continuity thing, where typically, I mean, a student's career is very, very tenuous. They graduate and they move on to other things, or from year to year, things may change. So I haven't found, and of course, they've got their busy workload. So that's been, I'm not sure if the student route is the best way. We because of the risks i mean definitely definitely the risks of people just leaving pretty quickly when they find some other opportunities so that's why we we're trying to focus on professionals pretty much stable professionals who who already are pretty much settled in what they're doing and perhaps they're looking to make a difference perhaps a person of your profile who's a professional person who's looking to make a difference in the world but they're relatively stable in what they're doing right now you know yeah yeah on the on uh, the, the school kids, I, yeah. I have some, I have some thoughts and a few yeah. bullet points coming up. Yep. Um, so let's move on to um, social recruiting. So social networking, as you know, is just this ridiculous phenomenon here with humans, um, and mm -hmm. it's a very powerful recruiting tool, and it's often um, not um, given the attention. Uh huh. It's it's magnitude. Um, and that means, so right now, like I, I went on to the OSE uh, Facebook page, and you know, and there's some information there and, and some good updates, but you can create a whole other tab in your Facebook page that's for opportunities. So it's another place to showcase the All right. So I know you've got like, I think you've got like 75,000 followers or something. Just yeah. It's awesome. Um, mm -hmm. And that's a huge network where they could be like, you know, noodling into the Facebook page to see what's going on with OS OSE, and they and they see the tab um, and other people that visit. I mean, even if looky lures, it's still it's a contact to one more person and yeah. then tells another person and tells another person. So absolutely, to, yeah, yeah. So we need to get that tab active on your Facebook. Page. Nice. Okay. Um. All right. Moving on to the next one is called sourcing, and that's really about cold calling. This is reaching out to people that may not necessarily be looking for something. However, you know, whatever, um, you know, there's a couple tactics of, of pulling, you know, out of like LinkedIn and um, uh, other other networks like algorithms of finding people that hit the keys, you know, the key pieces that we're looking for. And it's all about, it's like a, it's, it's not really a sales call, but it's that reach out. It's a cold call, really. And, yeah. and that's just saying, hey, I see that you're, you know, an achieved, you know, civil engineer there in, you know, North Carolina. I want to tell you about what we're doing here in, in Missouri with a, a, an organization, blah, 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 you know, something like that. So um, that's also another um, untap. Now, who does this cold calling? It could, it, it's, it's me. It's, um, you know, it, it, as I get to the next section, we'll talk about leveraging um, our current core members. Yeah. On teaching them to make a couple phone calls or, or, or something to that extent. So, again, it's just another uh, another tactic for us. Um, if I can move on to the next slide, if you're ready. Yeah, go ahead, please. Okay. And then I started thinking about universities. So, specifically, I started thinking about... Um, uh, Texas here, the um, university here. Um, I, you know, I have a, a, a colleague who um, who uh, is is quite intuitive, and he designed a, um, you know, uh, the tow truck industry, um, the, uh, the the towing capability, the equipment that it takes to tow, you know, a couple, you know, hundred tons or whatever. Um, this piece of machinery is extremely expensive. Um, and, you know, be it a farmer, be it a, 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 a anybody that needs to tow something, you know, it, it's, it's spendy. And to purchase one of these units on your own, again, it's the same kind of comparison to purchasing a tractor. Uh -huh. So anyways, he designed um, a no-frills, like, 
DIY, how to build your own, you know, I'm, I'm sure I'm not using the right technical terms, but this towing piece. Okay. Um, you know, and, you know, he, and I was like, how in the world did you do this? He, you know, he came from the towing industry, so, you know, he had a leg up. He's like, well, I started networking at the university, and I got a group of these nerdy engineers that got really pumped about, like, here's the problem, this is what I want to design. Uh-huh. Let's do it. So, again, that leads me to, he tapped into engineers there at our university here in Austin, um, to do all do all the CADs, do all the welding, and they 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 freaking made it. They did it. So very wow. similar to OSC, but it, it got me thinking. You know, again, these are college kids, and and um, you know they're they're they have different paths in their lives that they're they're going for. However, again, it's just another um, yeah possibility, and they're a network, and they're a network of, of up and coming. Um, again, it, it's still something that we should probably tap into, planting the seeds. And when I think of universities that have high communities of possibly, you know, what, what we're working towards, it's it's here in Austin. Definitely. It's, it's, uh, it's in Eugene, Oregon. It's in, you know, most of the Pacific Northwest. It's in Berkeley. It's, it's targeting these universities with these, you know, this type of mindset, these type mm-hmm. of things that aren't, you know, getting churned out to go for the biggest, baddest, most high paying job that they can find. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it's it's tapping into universities that have, you know, students that um, you know, might might be um, thinking about the world the way that we think about the world, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so, um, my my question was, you know, and, and we'll get to that point, like I need to understand what universities have been contacted and, you know, with each university, um, you know, they always, you know, of course, they're looking for intern, intern opportunities. I know there's an internship pro, uh, program there at OSC, um, but it's also, it's just a huge network. Mm-hmm. And so, I would make contact, and just like I would back in Las Vegas when I was hiring for the hospitality industry, I would go to their job fairs. I would set up a table. I would, you know, it, it, it's the same type of recruiting tactic, and that's mm-hmm. you know, getting in touch with these universities and going there if possible, or getting access to their website and being able to, you know, post opportunities there. Yeah. Um, should I keep going? Am I doing all right? You're doing all right. Should okay. I feed back on that or save it for later? Uh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, the idea is that on universities we haven't made specific recruiting calls there it would require a strong stakeholder like for example right now we do have a couple of collaborations there's one going on with um, it's actually in Texas again actually by where you are there's a group called Rentec and they're actually designing a, an open source heat exchanger and uh, open source steam generator for a modern steam engine so anyway that's a that's a relationship that's happened because there's a the co- concept of a strong stakeholder so the idea that there's someone there who follows our work but not at the university this is a guy at a company who's already working they love our work and they actually pulled together the student teams they did the legwork because it takes a, some effort to do that so the strong stakeholder idea is a good one just like in in another one university of utah there's a current developer dixon who's networking with local engineering students there to invite them to the to the osc developer team so once again having somebody on the ground to do that work because it's going to take all type of time to do the relationship building that's the way it can work and then of course it boils down to yeah who's going to do that do we have the people to run that recruiting process? Now, as far as myself, a uh, thing that I'm considering for next year, and it will happen at least to some degree, is when I can go out to a university, do a lecture, get an honorarium, do a workshop, for example. So, so I already have discussed the idea, okay, let's do some 3D printer workshops where I come in for a speech, I come in to do a workshop, and that, that could integrate with a recruiting effort. So I think that would be a strategic way perhaps to even just you know at this point say okay let's go out to you know 10 or 20 universities for another lecture tour for 2018 let's say you know something like that would be where I can integrate that with the work on running workshops and giving speeches so that would be 
one way to do it that I can get personally involved in. Of course, like right now, we're trying to get the, for example, the the workshops that we do. We're trying to develop them as real revenue opportunities to that can be distributed to many people. You learn how to build stuff. You learn how to teach others to build that during workshops. And these workshops, like for example, a 3D printer workshop, say 12 people show up, they pay at the cost of materials plus some above that so that we can actually support our operation doing that and actually teach others to do that as well. So basically a cooperative effort or, a, or an open source franchise where we scale by training people who can run these workshops. So that's that's the kind of uh, revenue model that we're trying to promote in terms of the experience economy. So we believe in that the future, like beyond the service economy, is the experience economy, where people people are getting more experience than just product or service. And that experience is, for example, like building something, which is a very empowering experience, and people are willing to pay for that. So that's that's kind of the way we are pitching it to address both education and production in one, where you're deeply immersed in that productive and education process. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that that's on your 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 uh, your uh, sorry your critical path or your. Um, yeah, I want to see how many how many universities I can reach out. I already directly contacted so one of our board members is also a professor. A couple of them actually are and I was gonna pitch well I already had initial conversations saying okay let's do a talk and a workshop. So okay that's good so we're gonna plan that for say early next year. But we can choose to maybe emphasize that maybe maybe select a few key key institutions where we should show up and, and do the workshops and presentations. I've done that back, I believe it was 2015 or so. I did a 2014 or 15. I did a college tour, went to maybe like about 20 or so altogether, or maybe 15, 20, and that was good. That's great stuff. And then, of course, everywhere people ask you, well, how can I get involved? So right now we can have a much more direct call out, saying, hey, join a development team. This is what we're doing. Now, yeah, yeah, and then I can confuse things even further. Right now we're we're doing so herox.com if you want to google that up herox.com we're actually setting up a challenge where it's a crowd sourced design challenge and what we're gonna do is put the open source 3d printed cordless drill so a real product that meets or exceeds industry standards and we're gonna b put a big challenge on it and a big reward for lead designers on that so it's a crowd thing. but that we can promote okay so say join our team join the development challenge you know so we can uh you know further integrate this like say i'm going on a college tour which i kind of I, I like the idea i mean it's always fun uh i mean i like talking uh, about this stuff of course and <laughs> uh meeting the people and so they have different avenues to participate specifically and that is join the dev team and then do the challenge you know get a school team to do it you know even collaborate as a school because we're going to focus on structuring such that it rewards collaboration like like when people do the challenge like the more you publish on your log and so actually we, we were going to set up a social network a log and burn down things like basic tracking where you the more you post the more points you get so and if other people use your stuff you also get points too so publish early and often so we're going to encourage the culture of publishing that's kind of getting off the topic a little bit but but it's it could also be a way to recruit people to the actual team if yeah. we integrate the strategy here yeah it's, it's certainly relevant so the you said it was hero x yeah hero x dot com is this something that's launched or you're developing it now? that's a that's an organization that came out of the the x prize uh, so this is like Peter Diamandis' work. I don't know if you know the name. You know Peter Diamandis? I do. Right. So that's his extreme, like all this exponential technology stuff. But Hero X is like this exponential uh, development platform. They're actually, that's an existing organization that was an offshoot of the X Prize, and it's for challenges that are not X Prize, but also could be at that level because there's actually a couple of. Uh, saw their side they have like million dollar challenges on there too and I was thinking that for this I'm actually getting very ambitious on this hero X I'm actually looking at 
actually a million dollar prize as well which would take about six months to put together the challenge and then six months or eight months to run it but basically through donations and through crowdfunding and going to to supporting corporations uh, see if we can raise this huge amount because I mean this is serious because well just a little background on that uh, cordless drills themselves are a billion dollar market in the United States alone so we can say okay develop an open source one that can create a, a manufacturing business in every city you know so so we're, we're kind of going along that route that's that's related to our work with recruiting and that we can use that as a definite opportunity for recruiting there's a on hero x itself we can set up a there's it's a, they're actually a social network it's like facebook except what they do there is focus the discussion on the crowd design so um very exciting i mean as far it's essentially what you call a crowd you can potentially crowdfund it. It's a crowd design challenge, incentive prize, because you incentivize people by saying, here's a reward. And it's been shown that typically people spend much more money than the reward itself to, to produce and to compete simply because of the kind of the, the comp competitive aspect and the glory aspect of that that you actually can win a prize and so forth that makes people contribute like it's 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 one of those things of tapping human psychology how people really like to compete and yeah. um and do something that, especially if it matters because they you know say the results matter it's a good project so uh That's extremely exciting now you believe your your 6 to 8 months to go live yeah, yeah. I, I mean, that's what I'm I'm considering right now. Like right now, I just met with him two days ago. So take a take a look at that link I just sent you, HeroX.com. Just met with him for the second time, and we're basically laying out what the challenge looks like on the cordless drill. So uh, cordless open source 3D printed drill, which also includes the ability to manufacture that. That means developing a way to produce it, meaning a, an industrial grade 3D printer. So that would actually be part of the challenge simply because if you want to produce these cordless drill you have to have a really good 3d printer to make it happen reliably and that you can actually start a business doing that you know so so we're going pretty ambitious on that and i think it's a great way to kind of show we call it we call it the open source micro factory challenge but uh it's a great way to involve people on all levels because 3d printing and design is accessible to a lot of people they can use open source software and we can actually help them by producing uh this like design some some library like 3d cad library part files which they can actually use to design this and so so given the access to this open source cad and these workflows that we're actually developing in different ways yeah we could really integrate this this collaborative aspect uh which integrates with developing the team in a major way so i think this is very relevant in terms of us weaving that into this package so it sounds like okay say there's this college tour reaching out to colleges we've got this hero x now that's so that's that's one of the things we we definitely want to do but then of course in the background what else is there so maybe i'll let you continue on other thoughts on how we actually do you know get the feet on the ground in terms of actually recruiting and um besides besides these projects that we have going on sure. yeah this is very exciting i look forward to to uh, learning more about Hero X and uh, of course uh, looking at leveraging that. Mm -hmm. And that's a huge community. I just clicked on the the, yeah. the, the link. There's quite a few folks in there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Super. Um, let's see. Uh, our next one was uh, just talking about actual recruiters, so actual body count yeah. participants. Um, so the, you know, we, we had briefly talked about it last week and that's how to leverage our, our current core team, mm -hmm. uh, as recruiters, um, and how, you know, I can participate in getting them ready. Um, and so recruiting, recruiting can, doesn't have to be, um, a, it doesn't have to be a full-time job. It's really, it's just that, uh, internal network using internal leverage to just reach more people about the, the cause, the project, the organization. And I'm going to go back to um, social media. You know, as I, as I kind of peruse through um, 
I think there's 13, I think it shows like 13, I could be wrong on that number, in, uh, that currently work at OSE connected to the OSE uh, LinkedIn page. And so as I clicked on everybody's profile, mm-hmm. uh, um, th- again, there is a, that's another platform for, for a very easy copy and paste in to push um, okay. the volunteer opportunity. Um, once we finish this slide, I'll take you to another document that's housed right there to okay. start the, the, the checklist of, of sources. But again, that's a very, very easy low maintenance. Everybody can do it. One person posts, and then you just you just push it. You just grab it and push it and grab it and push it. It's, it's super easy. On LinkedIn? Uh-huh. Okay. All right. Um, and then... Um, let me let me hold on social media for a second because it, as you know, it's huge. Um, yeah. Now, when I was thinking about okay, well, what you know, what be it in person or be it be a social networks, whatever, like the propaganda. Yeah. You know, digital is best. Paper is fine if you have something in your pocket or have something in your bag. You can say, hey, here's a great information brochure about OSE and what we're about. But again, digital is usually can, can reach more people. So I, I'm, I'm assuming you have some kind of propaganda, and pardon the word propaganda, if you'd like me to yeah. use a different word, I can We've um, got, um, right, I mean, the OSC developer pages are announcement. We have a little video there, but that's all. We didn't really publish much as far as uh, kind of like a flyer or something. We don't really have that. Okay. Um, that's, that's easy enough, because most of, the, most of what's needed lives on your website. So yeah. Just taking that and popping it into, you know, I don't know, like an InDesign layout or something like that, and then publish it to be uh, HTML, and people can push it out. You know, if somebody says, "Hey, I need, to, I want to know more," right? We'll the flyer, and here's the link to our website. You know, just, you know, talking, uh, thinking out loud. Um, and I'm sure there's some talent somewhere or, that already exists on the team. Um, that, that can do something like this, or I, I'm not sure who designed and developed your website even. Um, but again, deeper conversation in a moment. We can we can go there. We can come back to this. Um, the other bullet point was warming up the cold call. And that just goes back into you know if we have a select you know high performers on the core that that aren't a, that that are fearless. Uh, mm-hmm. That would be interested in you know reaching out to people passive what I would call passive candidate you know those people that don't aren't actually looking uh, but really helping them uh, teach them how to, to warming up the cold call that it's not that scary and here's your your basic outline and it's not like reading a script it's really how do you enter into a dialogue and a conversation with somebody um, to tell the story so I just kind of threw that bullet point in there as it was floating around in my head. Um, and then the two-day rule, um, keeping it out of my head, just really, really important, regardless of, you know, who, who's on the, who's recruiting or who gets contacted or if somebody, you know, if we launch the ATS and people are applying, you never, ever want to leave people hanging. You know what I mean? It's that constant contact, um, and, you know, many of us um, put it to the wayside, and companies do it all the time. HR does it all the time. You know, you've got 50 people in queue that have shown interest into your position, and nobody's working the queue, and it just sits there, and people become disengaged. And it's kind of like, well, why would I want to be a part of this if it took you two weeks to even contact me? Do you know what I'm saying? So, it's again, it's just another thought that I wrote down. It's just two-day rule to ensure that we immediately contact people that contact us that have an interest. And regardless, if we know that there's just no way this person would be a good fit or, you know, it, it's still it's still starting a relationship with them because that's another human being that can maybe know somebody else or can talk about it or, you know, so on and so forth. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So that, that's, <laughs> those are some of my thoughts. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. So maybe one thing, one way. So there's two things that stick out. So getting the platform up and running. So I'm on slide two, like what would be our next steps? Can I invite you maybe to do like one thing with the current developers? What if they got a quick crash course on how to do that? Can you maybe prepare a little present, little training? Like, can you? 
possibly get on with us like for 15 minutes during our meeting and say, okay, this is what we do for recruiting, like give them a little crash course or give all of us, yeah. give us a crash course? Uh, of course, of course. Um, I think, um, yeah, with, with that, with the, so that's, you know, two parts. So one, choosing the platform that we want to use. What ETS do we want to use? If you know, if you just give me free reign and let me start digging into all these different platforms and find what I believe to be, you know, the, the top one or top two, and have the team take a look, or if you want me to just make an executive decision and say, here we go, team. This is this is our ATS. This is the platform that we're using, and let me show you how to use it. Something like that. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, I think that's what. I think we should do that. Here's what we want to use, and then of course present. Here's the other ones that we thought were decent or not decent for various reasons. But yeah, just get people going. So are you saying that on this collaborative, so this ATS, we can actually have everybody collaborate on that? So have all these users on it? Well, it depends. Some of, some of the open source ATSs only allow you to have one one user, but that doesn't mean that we can't interchange username, password, whatever, but it, it's designed mm -hmm. to allow you to have one recruiter. If you have more than one recruiter, you're posting more than, you know, one or two jobs, then you start getting into, it's no longer open source. They want to charge money. Uh -huh. So I, I haven't fully um, vetted it, but um, ultimately there's, the possibility of everybody being able to hop in and take a look at the, the candidates and whatnot, it, it is possible, but I, I, I'm not sure which ATSs allow more than one um, login, lack of vernacular. Um, okay. But I know ultimately, ultimately it would be great if we could get, you know, two or three um, logins to be able, you know, to pick two or three um to kind of be the, the keepers. There's another thing about ATS systems is um, it, it can be detrimental to have too many hands in the pot, too many people touching candidates and moving them through the process without going through yeah. the process to, no. so that everybody's on the stage to either reject or forward. Right. That's, I mean, if we talk about that, I, I mean, I, I would see two levels. One is the actual ATS that's the dedicated person manages, which we don't really have right now, in which case the case should be made perhaps to have a dedicated recruiting effort for an HR generalist. Because once again, it's just a position we haven't filled. Like nobody, I mean, we, I mean, this is the weird thing. We put posted on volunteer match and just the people that came through just didn't really cut it. Um, well, maybe we can do a, a nice uh, push for that as an oh. initial step. Yeah, absolutely. And let me comment on that. So I picked up the, the HR um, volunteer opportunity and pushed it out on my LinkedIn network. Um, I had, you know, at the time I posted, I checked it, in a, you know, in a few days and I had 100 clicks. Now I'm up to 200 and something clicks. Now that, that you know, those are just people like they see my post and like oh what is Connie saying and they'll go and they'll take a look mm -hmm. um, but I can't tell from volunteer match if that got us any traction whatsoever I mean it, it, who do you go in and look at yeah I mean so so check this out I mean uh, you know there were several candidates and like you know a couple of them were just you know just quit like like one didn't really make it another one applied interviewed them and then they said no sorry this is too much for me and that's been kind of a typical story it's like you know maybe someone responds a little bit it goes a little bit forward and then they go like no this is really too much it's kind of like as if it were too much for them so so it's like are we putting out a wrong message or like is volunteer match not the right place to do it or or what i mean i just haven't figured it out yet yeah, no, I, 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 I agree. I, I think volunteer matching is a fantastic vehicle, and I, I think it's great. However, when I looked at the job description and I picked it up and pushed it, and I, I honestly felt that I was like, shit, that's a, that's, that's, that's a bit to ask somebody that currently has a full-time career in, in HR to then do this too. Because really what we explained, what's explained out in that um, you know, job preview um, is a full-time job for an HR professional. So I think there's a way we can probably okay. kind of streamline it a little bit and just hit those highlights. I know that there's an, an ultimate goal to have this just magnificent person. Well, 
not not necessarily one, but I'm thinking like really we need a team of four if it's a ten hour per week involvement. Right. So we're really you know really getting up to an equivalent of one good per person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So you know building that that core HR team. There, I think there's a way that we can make it a little more palatable. I don't know what that is yet, but I can certainly start kind of writing out something that will put it more in HR speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be it the recruiting bucket, the onboarding bucket, um, you know, just kind of make it more palatable. Okay. Um, so it, it doesn't... And I mean, here's, here's one more comment. And yeah, I mean, that's exactly it because we're throwing down the whole, you know the whole program too much for people to handle but initially I, I was thinking that the best I mean is there any way to integrate the the recruiter role with the developer because as I said at optimally everyone would actually pass the free CAD test which is our main design tool so that we're getting technically savvy people like somebody who's actually willing to learn it and understand the tools that we use so they can be better at recruiting um, Ideally, the person who's the recruiter, they participate just a little bit on the dev team or at least just peek into it. They're not just HR. I mean, that's, but, but maybe that's, a, that's why we're failing. Is, is it, is that, do we want to just totally separate that and specialize that into, okay, this person's just HR and that's it. They're not going to touch the development process. You know, it's possible, but I mean, you know, if I, if I had to, give you an absolute right now, I, I would say that, you know, finding that perfect combination is, um, seems a little unsurmountable at the moment. Okay. Um, but never close our minds off to it because that person okay. could be out there right. and we just haven't met them yet. Um, yeah. but I, I think to get this going in the right direction and, and really start getting some traction, is that we do just focus on the HR portion. Okay. Now, but as an HR individual, you have to understand what you're recruiting for. So there is there is a, a ramp up a little bit because you need to understand what you're recruiting for, and that means taking a dip in and looking at, the, one, what OSC is all about, what the, you know, what is a CAD, you know, all that stuff, there has to be a little bit of a, a learning process. So, and that's, yeah. that's, that's normal. That's typical, um, for, okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so we'll focus on, okay, the HR is very specific. So don't, don't start confusing it with, oh, okay, this person has to actually un develop in the, at the same time. Okay. We'll do that. Um, so definitely I see, um, a definite need for an HR generalist push so we got to build that to kind of start from zero because because I mean right now I'm basically doing all of that you know I'm just spread too thin on all these things so um, yeah let's try to find somebody uh, launch then yeah. w then I, it seems like the I mean, it seems like the ATS that's gonna be for that person so we don't you know don't talk about that yet because I think that can confuse our team unless there's a there's a very effective way that we can do basic tracking for these very casual kind of uh, outreaches, say our team, you know, they're contacting friends, they're contacting, p posting it on their social media or whatever, professional networks, uh, and we should track that. But I don't know, is that worth tracking or just kind of let, you know, like say we do this 15 minute crash course training on recruiting, what do we cover there? Would it uh, include the HDS, HD, ATS? Well, I, I don't think we have to get granular on the education of, of how to navigate the ATS yet. Uh, I think the, the first 15, the, this is like guerrilla recruiting. We're going to yeah. teach everybody how to be a guerrilla recruiter. Um, yeah. And I think this will be, um, um, uh, bear with me as I just kind of think out loud. We, we need to cover um, the, the, the power of internal. Um, yeah, yeah. Right, so leveraging that, why we're doing it, um, and then getting getting to the how we do it is we need to, to come up with um, like canned posts that hey, 
hop over to, I'm just going to use myself as an example, hop onto Connie's LinkedIn net, uh, page and you'll see multiple posts for you to uh, repost in your network regarding OSE. So nobody has to be an author. Nobody has to be um, make this stuff up. It should be all canned and ready for them to go. Um, yeah. And so it's teaching them how to do that. I know most everybody, uh, most, most of them, that are on LinkedIn know how to use LinkedIn and it's, it's, it's very very user friendly and then also um, same thing with the uh, the Facebook uh, Instagram any other and then any other professional networks um, so I think it's it's teaching them that and then that the, um, where to go to get these canned messages images tidbits um, hashtags whatever it might be and then, um, that's you know, an HR that's, kit essentially. You know, yeah. the social media HR kit. Yeah. With that, I mean, as we tap into like universities and stuff, that's I think that might be a separate because really, yeah, that's not that's not for everyone. So if you have like a one or two core members that that really rise in being able to, to, that are savvy to be able to do this, um, they, they might be the ones that we tap and say, hey, would you be interested in reaching out to, you know, Barbara Johnson at the University of X um, to introduce yourself, introduce OSE, and see if we can, you know, get any traction from, you know, their community. So I think that's, um, that might be a little more advanced. Um, for the initial just kind of crash course. Now the, sorry, let me step back. Now going back to the ATS, um, that is all really dependent on how many, I'm going to call it licensing, how many licenses we can get to be able to use the system. And again, it would be, you know, until we have a, a full HR core team, if we wanted to choose one or two of the core, or the, the existing core OSD members to be able to have access, to be able to, yeah. you know, go through resumes and, and respond to folks. I don't think you should have multiple people in the pot. Because, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a little, a little convoluted. And right. again, it's a collaboration. So if you guys come together as a team and look at potential um, collaborators, um, you know, that, that's a different story. Yeah. No, I mean, we're kind of spread thin right now. Like, we're just trying to, you know, do a good job on the design work already. And some other people are doing some other stuff, like the back end or, or other software-related work. So, yeah, our team is kind of thin right now. We don't want to spread them thinner. Yeah. for a second yep. and let me just um, since we're kind of talking about ATS if yep. you go back to my log page okay um, there's another document below alright so for one I just have to feel, feel pretty awesome because I have I, I, I'm like I just I just have enough information how to be damaging on wiki right now so <laughs> being able to <laughs> I was having my victory dance of being All able right. to to do this Excellent. Um, and it's not perfect because I, I copied the line of code out of your post to figure out how do I size it I don't even know how to size this <laughs> right um, go ahead and uh, click on the OSC ATS tracking workflow sheet these, these yeah 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 you, yeah you did it I mean you did the size there you did uh, I'm gonna enlarge it a little bit so we can see it Please. Please. Um, <laughs> that's great um, Okay, so because of course you can go onto the edit link and get into the actual source file, which uh -huh. is great. But now I just enlarge it. If you refresh on the wiki page, it, it got bigger. Um, I just put bigger numbers in this height and and oh, width. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I have a skill set in other areas, Martin, so this is fine. <laughs> no, this is great. That's awesome. So, oh, okay, but you need to, like, I clicked on edit and you need to give me permission if I want to edit that. So what we do, we just always set the permissions anybody can edit. Okay, and that's okay. actually, okay, so if you go into the doc itself, go into the sharing settings, like on the upper right, it will have share. Okay. Uh -huh. And then anybody can edit. 
Now, you might think that's kind of dangerous because anyone just can come in on our wiki and destroy the document. Well, in reality, we've never had that happen. So, and if it does happen, there's a version history so you can just revert back to the old version. So it's it's totally cool. Um, so if you take some baby steps with me for a second. Right. I just clicked on the document and it opened it up in Google Docs. Yeah, so go right upper right corner, there's a share button. Okay, click that. Now it's saying share with other people, and then it's got a, a text box. Go to advanced. Yeah, thank you. Uh, change. Yeah, go to advanced, and then change, and say public on the web, and then access anyone can edit. You can select between can comment, can view, and can edit. Just do can edit. Right, and then I should be able to go go back in there, and yep, I'm in there, so that's good. So, thank you, and so, yeah, so, ATS tracking, did you just come up with this, or this is something you had already for? So, I, this is something that I've used again and again, Okay. also there's contributions to some of the text and whatever from another... Um, company corporation and I don't know if I need to put that in the footer if anybody gives a care right now uh, but it's it's from open source it's an open source HR document so um, I don't think there's any credits or anything that I have to give that's a really long-winded answer but this is very very standard very very uh, textbook on an application flow process in an ATS and so it's kind of like this then that this then that this then that um, and this can be customized to be to speak more OSE, but I wanted to give you a feel of what is the what is the lifespan of somebody that's a, a possible you know candidate. So, if I may, I'll just kind of go ahead. It a little bit. So, let's say I I see it and I want to apply. So I go to our ATS and I I apply. Now on the back end, this is my roadmap. So the candidate applies. If they've applied to the requisition, now is the recruiter or so source sourcer, um, I either reject because they don't meet some form of minimum requirements um, or I proceed to screen. And that means I push them to the next step. There's something there that we want to take a closer look at. So then the next step, there's a screening process. And really that screening process is already defined um, by you guys, you know, with the, the, the CAD testing and, and some, some other things. So. Um, now, if, if we don't take them to what will be the next step, we either reject the candidate or there's a possibility the candidate will start, you know, getting more information and, and they may withdraw um, or we reject them and say, hey, not right now, um, but there is a skill set there. There's something. So we're going to tag them as a future fit to, to make sure that we keep them in our database to be able to reach back out for maybe another opportunity, so on and so forth. It's like building a pipeline. Um, now mm -hmm. let's say we've got this star person that we really want to move forward, then it proceeds to, and what we call in our industry is the hiring, hiring manager. And that could be a project lead, that could be, you know, could be the team is the hiring manager. So mm -hmm. then the next step is the actual review, review process. And this is internal, so I'm not 100% sure of how it, 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 it plays out on the team, but so we've, 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 um, uh, the hiring manager now, like, let say I pass it to you and say, hey, Marjorie, I want you to take a look at Tom. I think he's fantastic. Let me know your thoughts. You're like, absolutely, 100%, I agree. So then we push him forward to the next step, which is the interview. Or you might say to me, eh, not right now, maybe in the future, or no way, Jose, reject them. Um, now, the next step from that is the actual, so you've approved, I, the recruiter's pushed, hiring manager approved, then we actually go to the interview process. Now, there's three set in here. It doesn't have to be three. It's whatever we want it to be or whatever you currently do. Maybe it's just one panel interview and a one-on-one. -on -one. Like, I don't We have a video cover letter right now for the interview. Okay. Yeah. And what, what is the, what is the um, curious, what is the interaction with the candidate? So let's say that I, I reach Interact out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Currently, we have, they submit an initial application and if they look good, I mean, 
everyone looks good to me at the point where they're expressing interest until of course you see okay this is their video cover letter if they're capable and they look all good then we invite them after the video cover letter to actually submit the test so the because what we care about is simply uh, can they work together can they have the basic technical skill set and the ability to document their work if they can do that then that's their test and after that we get them on the team now on the team there's also like another kind of a screening phase if they show I mean some people have actually shown up on the team and ended up doing very little or no work like hardly any work and then then we just have a conversation hey it's like you're not meeting their requirements what's going on is that are you lost or or what's going on but at that time some people have just ended up you know they joined they actually went through this long process to apply and it takes like anywhere like 10 to 20 hours about to do the test and then they just um, kind of quit after that you know so that's that's what we've seen so far uh, and then of course the team people who make it they continue on a team and so far the the track record is like I can actually uh, I'm keeping a good track of that and that is yeah let me let me show you the numbers but right now just so we have a feeling for the numbers but current team size is 17 people and the number of people that have applied uh, or have gone through the process is a total of so I'm just scrolling down my spreadsheet and we've got 90 people so that's that's how much we've done so far out of 90 people current current team size is um, 17 okay, so, so which is actually gone down or is going down, right? Which, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. I mean, we had a couple of losses. I mean, that's 17 is, I think, the current number after a few losses there. But that's, so like, you know, one, one out of five, one out of six. So it's a 16% success rate at this point from people starting with the initial application, okay. meaning just f filling out interest. So that's what's happening so right now. Well, I don't know. It's not, you know, when coming from my world, I mean, I would have to see, I'd have to see like a hundred candidates just to yield like ten. So. Right, right. <laughs> well, that's that's about comparable. Yeah. So, but it does mean that that we need to go through those numbers. I mean, that's the bottom line. I mean, there's a few gems on our team, like people who just are totally team players. They teach others they are always doing their work and always participating in the meetings effectively and asking questions and there's others that are kind of just almost floating uh some that are just you know i have to actually follow up with them because they're just uh you know not meeting their hours so so the the idea there is it's like okay let's get rid of that overhead of having to follow up and all that let's you know let's have more candidates and then we select the better ones and then if people are not not like we that that we pretty much minimize get to zero the fact that we actually have to follow up with people and see hey like what are you doing your where's your you know your hours are not showing the the commitment so yeah yeah I mean just regular regular stuff but yeah. bottom line being we just got to go through the numbers and that's that's where we're kind of short on that's why we need the HR team okay yeah no I told yeah I'm with you yeah and, you know, yeah, yeah it's just any 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 business any company any any industry. It, it really does come down to, and I'll just call it the hiring process and how you screen and how you're selecting those. Like, do you do we actually hire well? You know, right. And yeah, it can be it can be challenging, and it's and it's always always changing and evolving. So, um, so if I if I am you know, let's say I'm I'm in it to win it. I pass the the cat. Then how do you interview me? Do you Skype me? Do you? What's the human contact? What's the human cell of the passion for the project? Right. So, so what we had on at this point was basically once we the person makes it, the, so it's email communication to that point, and at that point we give them a little welcome package. Here's just how you get set up, and then what we'd like to do is check in with them, actually give them a call or something to welcome them to the team um, now the person that was doing that just actually quit so that there's a loss there so we really have nobody doing that and that, that means that I should what, what should happen 
is after the person gets on, we have an initial meeting with them to, to kind of assess where they're at. I think that's been a weak point because we've got everybody just thrown on a team without having them own like, okay, here's the very concrete things you'll do for the next 90 days. And I think we have to introduce that. Like a person, as soon as they, they're on, they make a commitment at the end of 90 days, this, these are some of our main goals. And we haven't done that. We basically put people on a team saying, okay, this is our critical path. We're going to be working on that as a team. I think to get more accountability and more like uh, uh, more engagement is kind of have people more clear about what their specific contribution to the team is. That's just something I, I, I've thought about uh, because some people can be like, you know, what's my assignment? I don't want to have that ever happen. Like, I don't know what to do now. No, we have to, I would say we spend that initial time up front where we talk to them and, and train them a little more about saying, okay, this is the role you're going to be responsible for so that if you don't, you shouldn't ever be in a place where, okay, what are we doing this week? You always have something like, say we don't follow up with them or it's not, they maybe missed a meeting, they don't know what to do. No, that, that can't happen. So that's just one of those improvement points that need to happen. And right now we have a gap in that initial upfront contact. Now, before we did the video cover letter, I did the, I pretty much did all the interviews. So that was that, that contact there. And uh, after that, the contact is on a regular working meeting. Everyone participates in that. Okay. Once a week. Two, uh, two things. So one, um, so that that those that ninety days are critical to 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 engage and capture that person to keep them on the project. You know, and I was I was reading articles, and I can't remember the gentleman's name, but it's he was behind uh, the the Linux business model and it and and uh, yeah, what's his name? Linus uh, Torvalds. Yeah. There was a there was an article about open sourcing and how you keep uh, where where we go wrong when you're when you're starting to do an open source project where people feel isolated they're not connected and it, and you know that encouragement of like it doesn't matter you've got to reach out every week and make contact with those folks and say hey you're doing a great job or where are we at with this it's just constant right this really is. Um, some form of management structure that has to happen absolutely uh, to keep the to keep to keep everybody going and because we're all humans I mean some of us will take initiative and we know exactly the plan we make the plan we work the plan but there are others that still they're followers and they're not leaders so they, they need that direction so with that being said you know that 90-day critical um, area right there is also part of um, what we should construct and that's a, a 90 day onboarding plan you know hey this is what you can expect in the first week and this is what week two three looks like and this week da, 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 da. you know what i mean so yeah. it's, it's that it's their navigational that's their roadmap yeah and that's, um I, I know i'm saying you should you should we should but i, I it's just i'm just you know thinking out loud and I, we, we can totally yeah i mean we, totally we really got to do it i mean we just don't have it we don't really have a good onboarding plan yeah, yeah. It, it's, yeah, it's fine. It's we can course correct. It's so cool. It's easy. Yeah. Um. So okay. And there's another thing I wanted to mention. The 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 magnitude, the influence of of getting interviewed by the founder of OSE is impactful. So it's it goes along with that that human factor right. there of you know, anywhere we can insert you as being part of the screening process, you know, maybe it's, let's say that there's, um, you know, John on your team and, you know, I, 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 I scan, I move it on to, to John, John takes a look and then pitches it to the team. Everybody agrees that this is a, a positive candidate. Let's move forward with it. He does maybe an initial interview. Right. And it's like, no, we really want to pull the trigger on this guy. And this is when we bring in you and yep. then you do that. And, Sometimes people need people, so I don't know if it's a Skype session or if it's, you know, something like that. Because, of course, we're not a multi-billion dollar company that can say, hey, we're going to fly you out. You're going to come out, out to Missouri and take a look. You know, it's not like that. Right. Um, so, but there's, um, I, I would imagine you're, you're probably a humble person, but don't be humble. And, <laughs> 
this is a this is a, the the power of your name and your and your creation and ideation um, will help in the recruiting process. So you yeah. you you, have, you still have to be inserted into the, the process somewhere. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, um, absolutely. And of course, not just from the star factor, but also from obviously um, you're you're the SME, you're the subject matter expert, right? Um, that that needs to have a pretty good say on, on final decisions on who's brought into the pool. Right. right. Sorry. Moving on. So um, you'll see that uh, interview one, two, three, they're just a repeat. And that's, you know, if we only have one process or two interviews, one interview, whatever, that can we can customize this. And then ultimately the final step in the ATS is that person is, is pushed to offer. So there's some kind of offer um, extended. Now you'll see the the... The words that I use are based on like a, a revenue generating company, so salary benefits, da, 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 da. that of course can be altered. Um, but the point is just to say this, um, the offer is extended, they either accept or they reject, and why did they reject, and, and if they are accepted, then we get pushed on to the next step, and that's the onboarding, the, you know, let's say the 90-day onboarding plan. The goal of doing this and, and doing a, a visual to it is just really helping people understand how the system works and and it's all um, it's all uh, it's all system space so it's it's you know it's all click 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 and it moves them down the hiring path um, but that's what each click represents so to speak if that makes any sense yeah why do you always have proceeds to first interview and stuff proceeds to second interview or um, that's me lazy typing that's me copying and pasting. Is that what you okay. <laughs> okay. Proceeds to interview. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. That's totally what that is. Because it should be proceeds to second interview, proceeds to third. That was Connie being, sorry, Martin. Um, me just copying and pasting and not actually typing. So, um, anywho. Um, yeah. So, that's uh, just something to share to kind of introduce you into a little bit of an ATS workflow. That's what it's kind yeah. of like. Yeah. Uh, all right. Um, what else? And then um, if I could go back to our page, mm -hmm. um, and then we, I need to do the same thing um, to my next... Uh, The, the other document that I embedded, I need to, to yeah. do just did so to share it. <clears throat> so. Okay, the, the, the final document that's in there, um, the next document is just a very simplistic, just me uh, throwing some stuff down last night, and that was just trying to figure out how can we you know, put a grid or something up about um, recruiting on what each individual can do, just like a checkbox type sheet. Um, it, it's nothing too impressive, but. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's see, so. What do we do with that? So th do we save this for the meeting on Yeah, I think, and I think it's, a, it's a document I need to, to continue um, uh, making a little more robust and adding some stuff in. It was really just my thoughts last night. I wanted to okay. get out of my brain on being able to track who's doing, who's doing what. Mm-hmm. So I need to, I'm sorry, I need to evolve it a little bit, but I just wanted to get something up there for you and I to look at. Um, but ultimately, it's 
you know, it's just it's just a tracking sheet. It's like, all right, core member number one. So, hey, Marjan, I need you to make sure that you, you know, post on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, um, you know, and maybe I've assigned you to jump on a university chat board with a, you know, an engineer group here in Austin or, you know, something like that. Um, I don't know. There may not be a whole lot of value, but, um, again, it's just a, 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 <clears throat> a visual on who's supposed to be doing what. And this yep. is, this will grow a little bit. Um, okay. Yeah. My goodness. Okay. So let's see. Um, what's next? Um, I don't know. <laughs> um, can you... Let's, I mean, let's do a simple one right now. So how about, um, can you appear Tuesday, 1.30 p.m. to do a 15-minute crash course on guerrilla recruiting? Uh, say the date again. Uh, Tuesday, 1.30 p.m. So that would be Tuesday the 19th. So step number one is just to get our people, you know, get everybody just with proper skills to collaborate on on spreading the word we talked about it in previous meetings and we kind of didn't you know we said yeah reach out to your friends to your networks but maybe we can get you know just a little higher level uh, discussion on that just just to get people on the right track sure yeah um, I can do Tuesday at 1 30 yeah um, that'll be awesome I mean that's that's a great way to get everybody just on that part and and as far as the HR generalist push, the thing that we need there is um, starting with better explanation. I mean, we we just gotta take down our old HR announcements and just say, okay, here's uh, just more clarity on what the role is and and just a simpler invitation. Maybe that's what will uh, get us more focused candidates. Yeah, you know, March, I need your permission. Can I just go ahead and uh, I'm just gonna take it. And I'm gonna revamp it. Um, yeah. And how do I send it to you? Do I keep right. going on wiki, or is this something that's more so, private? No, no, no. This is, we're all we're not afraid to share publicly like all this the stuff that we're working on. There's um, let's see. There's probably HR. Let's see. I don't want to confuse you on the wiki. Can you just okay? Simplest thing is just take that, put it into a, a Google Doc, and just share it with me, or or embed it on your log. You know, just no. here's here's the draft draft of our announcement. That's okay, it. That, that would be great. Simplest thing, yeah. Just do do that. Just do what you did, which is just embed it, in the like you did on your log. Okay. Mm -hmm. So copy and paste it, embed it, just trim it up, and let's let's do it again, and you know let's um, define the role more clearly and. And with it, be more clear about, okay, exactly what workflow is this person going through so that we can manage that, make it manageable. I think part of the trouble last time was it's like, it was just unmanageable because it was too big. So maybe we have to limit it and get very clear performance management for the HR team, which which I'll be doing, or you can help me on that. Um, but, but we got to keep on top of what our HR is doing with simple procedures. So just simplify reduce that's that's our next task here um all right so i'm gonna revamp that throw it up there now question who is monitoring how does volunteer match contact you so let's i want to yeah I, I, like if i wanted to know has there been any movement in the last seven days has anybody applied do they contact you via email be it volunteermatch.com or yeah yeah, they okay. do. It goes to e our email as well as to hr at opensourceecology.org. So, hr at opensourceecology.com? Dot org. Dot, sorry, dot org. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Um, because uh, uh, that's great that that's set up, and you you monitor or you and your team monitors that email, right? Yeah. HR, okay. Um, that that will help me as I continue to do my pushing on my networks, where I can say, hey, you can contact directly at HR at Open Source. Okay. Um, 
so there's been no 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 peeps out of volunteer match in the last seven days, fourteen days. It's all gone crickets, radio silence. Right. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, the the goal is not to get discouraged. Um, um, and again, yeah, yeah. There's no, more. I mean. It's just, I mean, the question is, what's not working? Just identify what's not working and let's fix it, you know. Right. I mean, there's cause and effect. <laughs> uh. All right, well, I'll need um, a couple of days to get a, a draft up there on my log in regards to revamping that. Um, so if I could have that, that would be great. Um, Sorry, what do you need from me? Uh, just, uh, just time. I just need a couple of days. Yeah, yeah. And I'll, I'll throw it up on the, the log. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And that would so will you will you just do you get notified if I post something or you'll just kind of on the log? I yeah. don't no, I don't get notifications because I would have too many notifications. But um, just let me know once you've done it that when you want me to take a look at it, that would be great. Okay, good. And then my other question is um, this particular page. This is seen by the entire universe or just the open source ecology, like my discussion tab or anything like that? Who, who sees that? Is that the whole world? Yeah, I think so. Okay, well, I'm going to be mindful of that. <laughs> right. you got to censor yourself. No, no, I mean, just uh, well, kind of like thinking about it as, you know, we work in the public and we're always so professional. <laughs> so yeah yeah but you know that's the kind of culture we're trying to say it's like yeah i mean if it's useful to us we suspect it might be useful to somebody else and therefore let's keep it open okay. you know now if i wanted to do you, do you have anything that is more just internal that's just like a group chat or a group page well or? we have um yeah, we just do that on email right now. We haven't set up anything else other than that. Okay. We are gonna set up some some managed groups later, but we just haven't we haven't done that. Just do an email, and then everything else is pretty much public. Okay, cool. No worries. Um, let's see. And if I post anything on Wiki, and I'm like, oh shit, I shouldn't. Have, I that no, I need that to come down. Oh yeah. Um, well, just. Click edit I'm, again and edit again. That's all. Oh, and it'll let me wipe it out. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's the point of the wiki. You can go onto that page, you click edit, and you can change whatever you put. That's the beauty of a wiki. You can update it at any time. So it's it's a live sandbox. Okay. I just didn't know if there was, like, an administrator that had to go in and delete. Okay. Perfect. No, no. You can edit anything. The only thing I can do is uh, I can delete entire pages, but uh, you can just edit the rest. Okay, um, let's see, let me just look over my notes real quick and see if there's anything I wanted to ask. No, I think we, I, I, I've covered everything that I wanted to make sure that I articulate. Um, yeah. Okay. So next steps is um, I will shoot you an email once I have the the the, the version one point two up for you to, to look at, um, and then otherwise I'll just start preparing uh, for Tuesday one thirty. Um, oh, I'm sorry, Marchin. I do want to ask you one other question. So. I, I'd like to be a little more um, absolute. So if I talk to the team at 1.30 and I say, you know, hey, we're going to start doing all this and, and, and I need each of you to pick up this message and, and push it out, is there a, do we have a depository or somewhere where somebody like, or, or is there, is there like a group email list that I can have where I would say, hey, I'm going to send out the weekly, you know, posting make sure you pick up one of these and repost. Does that make sense? Oh, that would be cool, yeah. Uh, well, all I can do is uh, I can email to the entire group saying that I'm going to first 
first of all announce that you're going to show up at our meeting making sure that whoever wants to hear that appears for the meeting and you can feel free to respond to that that's that's going to be our current and updated list of members okay. it's only like you know our 17 people so that's fine yeah and that would be nice to like yeah i mean if especially if you give us an easy feed saying hey post this on your linkedin great let's all do it and yeah, there should be no excuse why nobody does you know if somebody yeah, doesn't do it that's the goal i don't want anybody to have anybody have to be a witty with words or think yeah. about it it's just pick it up and push it out yeah um, yeah so, so after this meeting you'll be able to provide to me uh like a group distro list via email yeah. for email okay great yep um, and then I'll, I'll work on that and then oh who controls your facebook page is that you yeah yeah i i do the facebook there's a couple of other editors do you want to Let's see. Did you want to post? You want to post right there? Do you want to? I, uh, I I can post as myself on there with the I can. Um, that's not the pro, that's not a concern. But what um, which I will, and then I'll tell everybody. Hey, pick up the. Or wait, actually, you know what? It would be better if it came from. You know the owner of that page. Of right. Facebook. So. Yeah, you so add, you can add me as an editor, or um, I can push whatever to you or to whoever you delegate to, to to put up there. That way, it's a central depository for Facebook, and say, "Hey, grab this and push it out." And yeah, it's... hey, just um, just send it to me because then you know, at first I can get. Um, I want to read the thing first anyway, so just send it to me, okay. and then down and... maybe we'll add you a little later or something. Yeah, yeah no worries. Um, I have no control issues. I'm fine with sending it to you. And then we need to create or or think about creating the, the tab on your Facebook page for opportunities. Oh, yes. So, um, yeah, if you can help me on that tab on Facebook. Yeah, so I can um, I can send you a couple links of, of just normal industry Facebook pages that have a job tab. So okay. You, so you can get see what it looks like, what get a brain going on okay um but that we'll, we'll need to create that and get that launched and that okay. will come just in tandem with choosing once we choose the ats that way whatever is posted on that job link they'll click it and it'll push them to our our ats Make yeah sense? yeah okay. yeah totally mm -hmm. well this is fun all right. No, this is good. This is good. So we'll have you on um, on one one thirty. Our meeting is from one to two, so we'll have you pipe in some good info. I mean, that's what we like to do at the meetings. We we go over some of the work and all that, and then if somebody has got some teaching content, we like to use the meetings for that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I should. Um, is this a, is this a Skype? Is that, is okay. That... So why don't you test it out right now? Go to. Let me send you this link. We use this thing called Jitsi. It's basically open source version of Google Hangout, proudly. <laughs> so, uh, s which we're actually going to install on our server. But click on that and see if you can join me there. Because I'm in there right now. It's, it looks just like Hangouts. It's just a little different. If you click on that, what does it tell you to do? It's loading right now. Yeah. It should be turnkey. It might ask you to do something on your, just say accept it. Uh, I have a gray screen. Let's see, there's a little number of one. When you clicked on it, wh where are you at right now? Uh, all I see is a, it's a gray screen. Um, huh. It's not telling you to do like accept this plugin or. Uh uh. That's weird. You should be able to get right into our meeting here because I'm in there right now. Um, let's see. Can I share my screen on Skype or, or no? Uh, no, I I don't know if I. Oh wait, maybe I need to start my camera. Yeah, start start your camera. Do you see like Jitsi.org in the upper left hand corner? I do. I do. Like you got to do something like start camera or like accept something or oh. what browser do you use? Uh, Safari. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. It should should work. I mean, I'm a, I'm on Chromium. Live streaming service is currently unavailable. 
Please try again. Do you have another browser that you can p paste the same link in? Maybe it's the browser. Um, what What would you recommend? Like Chrome. Chrome or Firefox. No, I'll have to install something. Um, uh. Yeah, see if you can... Um, if your browser doesn't work, please try another one if you have to install another one, if you wouldn't mind doing that. Uh, but it should work turnkey. I, I'm not sure what's going on there. Uh, maybe just like refreshing the computer or, or uh, sure. quitting the browser might make it work. But keep that link. That's where we're going to go at it. I'll check in with you, make sure you've gotten it up in the next few days, next day or two. Okay. Uh, let me just make sure I Okay. Well, I'm sure it's user error. Whatever it's happening, <laughs> user, always your error. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, so yeah, play with that, see if you can get that to work. And otherwise, um, let's kick some HR butt. All right, I'm with you. So, yeah, let's let's get going. I mean, the promise here is really good. I mean, uh, the project has got amazing social capital. We just need more bodies on the team. I mean, I think the bottom line, one of the learnings is uh, we simply need so many developers, and the very basic fact is we need more. So, <laughs> that's all it is. No yeah. problem. Fine. <laughs> problem is easily defined. <laughs> okay. All right, Connie. Well, well, we'll see you on Tuesday. And before that, I'll introduce you to the email list and introduce your little session on where you okay. a little crash course session for us. Okay. That'd be All great. Right. So sounds great. Thanks so much, Marchand. Take care. Have a great weekend. Okay. Thank you, Connie. Take care then. Bye-bye. Okay.